The neoliberal ideas that sustain the corporate state are swiftly losing their efficacy across the political spectrum. The right is retreating into Christian fascism, a celebration of the gun culture, and manipulating a legitimate rage against government, with the exception, of course, of the military and law enforcement, as well as the vulnerable, including Muslims, undocumented workers, liberals, intellectuals, and homosexuals. The left, knocked off balance by decades of fierce state repression in the name of anti-communism, is struggling to rebuild and redefine itself. Crippled by its association with a bankrupt and ineffectual liberal elite that has capitulated to corporate power and the demands of the national security state. Popular revulsion for the ruling elites, however, is nearly universal. And it is a question only of which ideas will now capture the public's imagination. Politics, if we take politics to mean the shaping and discussion of issues, concerns, and laws that foster the common good, is no longer the business of our traditional political institutions. We live rather in a system of managed democracy, one where corporate power legitimates itself through elections and courts it controls, as well as a subservient mass media. All purportedly democratic institutions, including the two major political parties, are fundamentally anti-democratic. They are used to crush any vestige of civic life that calls as a participatory, participatory democracy does on its citizens to share among all its members the power, benefits, sacrifices, and risks of a nation. They offer rather the facade of politics sustained through elaborate, choreographed, and incredibly expensive spectacles filled with skillfully manipulated emotion and devoid of genuine political content. The capture of political and economic power by a tiny cobble of elites is characteristic of the twilight of all empires, including ancient Rome, where a small group of oligarchic families exchanged power among themselves as civic institutions became a farce and the state disintegrated under mounting repression, corruption, and the folly of endless war. Electioneering in a managed democracy is continuous, partly by making it incredibly banal and boring, and it saturates the airwaves with party-controlled propaganda. Politics, in this sense, has been deformed by corporate money into anti-politics, into a way to demobilize the citizenry rather than engage it. It becomes a way to ignore the vital and important issues that face us, and it turns election contests into choices between manufactured political personalities. The fundamental platform of all major political parties is fear, fear of the other, rather than any genuine alternative to corporate hegemony. Opinion polls, the staple of what serves as political reporting, are not politics. They are forms of social control. The use of billions of dollars to fund election campaigns and pay lobbyists to author legislation is not politics. It is legalized bribery. We have seen corporations continue to write legislation, laws, and regulations, and corporate lobbyists to serve in top government positions within the administration. We have seen the explosion of drilling and fracking, and of course, the security and surveillance apparatus that makes us the most photographed, watched, eavesdropped, and monitored population in human history. Corporations freed from all laws, government regulations, internal constraints, are stealing as much as fast as they can on the way down. And the managers of these corporations no longer care about the effects of their pillage. They are digging not only our graves, but their own. 
genuine political activity, the organizing work needed to protect citizens from the abuses of power exists now only on the margins of our society. It means a rebuilding, pretty much from scratch, of local systems of participatory democracy and a re-education of what it means to be a citizen. This is a battle fundamentally about ideas. The understanding that life has an intrinsic value that overrides monetary value. As long as most citizens can be made to believe in the neoliberal ideas that justify global capitalism, relentless austerity, the private and state institutions under corporate control will remain unassailable. When these ideas are shattered, when they are exposed as a vast con game, the institutions that buttress the ruling elite will deflate and collapse. And this battle of ideas is what is percolating below the surface of American society and across the globe. 